Salut, guten tag, and bienvenidos to everybody who's here and everybody who's watching later to this, I believe it's numerically the fourth meeting of the Disabled and Non-Disabled Alliance Sacramento State for spring 2022. I could be wrong there on one of those points. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is not a thing about language. I don't know why I did that intro that way, but uh, we're talking today about uh, disability at Sac State. Oh, it also says meeting number four right there. Cool, good. Uh, I'm a genius. So. Yeah, that's gonna be the, the general topic. Um, thank you for, for tuning in, um, being here with us. We'll move right along into the agenda because we only have so very much time. Uh, first, we're gonna uh, go through some announcements. I'll, I'll do those. Uh, and we're gonna do uh, just a, uh, as much of a diatribe as we can on Sacramento State's uh, students, uh, uh, rather services offered to students with disabilities, ser uh, services and resources we've categorized them as. Uh, followed by probably a uh, fairly lengthy discussion portion because we want to uh, garner as much input as we can from the membership of the, of the club because you guys are the club. Uh, and we sort of made this PowerPoint in isolation. Okay, swiftly we go to the announcements page. That one. Uh, okay, cool. So we have uh, several uh, uh, things coming up. One of them is the official meeting, but first uh, there's the uh, support and event night which is uh, uh, March 25th at 6.30 p.m. PST, everything's at 6.30 p.m., uh, uh, which is just a sort of, you know, middle of the spring break, close to the end of the spring break, sort of hangout sesh uh, with all the, uh, with as many of the Dana uh, members who want to be there and whoever else. Um, following that, uh, the fifth official meeting, or no, sorry, following that uh, is the game night on uh, April 1st which is not an April Fool's Day prank, I'm like 80% certain, uh, which is gonna be, we're you know, watching a movie. Um, we did one of those before, it was a, it was a fun uh, anime flick uh, that actually made me sad because it was, uh, it was, it was about romance and stuff uh, and it wasn't very realistic and I know that, uh, I have, I, I have being 23 years old. So there you go. Uh, but this time probably it will be, uh, even that time probably was fun for everyone else. Um, following that, uh, the uh, next official meeting, the fifth official meeting, uh, will be on the rise and fall of the circus, just the, the history, the philosophy of the, of the circus, um, the, the, the deep uh, bad nature of it will be um, on April 7th, again, 6.30 p.m. PST, uh, same time, same place. Okay, uh, second, uh, yeah, second sort of. Uh, I wanted to make sh the announcement that uh, we are Kind of moving forward with the with the idea of of putting uh, Dana representatives on various sort of uh, governance and advisory committees here at Sacramento State, uh, in the form of me, I'm I'm doing the thing. Um, I'm on. I'm been appointed recently to uh, Associated Students Incorporated um, Student Academic Senate and its uh, lobby core. Student Academic Senate being the sort of advisory committee to the Academic Senate, which is uh, for faculty, and the lobby core being you know, lobbying uh, inst uh, uh, committee, which is after uh, legislation uh, to be to be endorsed and and uh, advocated for. I have already uh, met with like uh, a couple of legislatures teams uh, or legislators teams rather with the uh, explicit like goal of bringing in uh, ideas from the disabled non disabled alliance, one of which is involves like the budget ask for the coming uh, uh, fiscal year. At the state level, uh, which is an increase in budget uh, budgetary allocation for uh, specifically like new facilities and new academic projects at uh, CSU campuses, especially. Which is to say that the specific goal in my mind, and, and hopefully the specific goal there, is to update facilities to be, make them more accessible. So we're all. What I mean to say is that uh, it is it is going forward. This is a thing that can happen, and it, and it can uh, have some kind of impact. Uh, when we have membership on these committees, making these uh, making these advisory uh, uh, choices. Anyway, <laughs> the next thing I wanted to mention is just that um, we are uh, the we the officers of Dana will be uh, uh, some of us will be graduating at the end of spring. Some of us will be graduating uh, in, in the fall. Uh, others are transferring. So we are putting out the call now. We want new officers to be uh, enlisted. Enlisted, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we want new officers, uh, which is uh, a good opportunity for people who want to uh, take this club and make it something uh, beyond the time that we are here doing the officerships. 
Um, so Can if I, you are, yeah, uh, add something. Um, it's it seems like a daunting uh, job and position to be an officer, but it's actually not that bad and it's a lot more manageable the more officers there are because you can split the work more we're also considering making committees within the club so that regular members can help with the function of the club without necessarily being officers if they're not comfortable with that but the bottom line is we need more people to be active and regularly and consistently engaged with the club because we're not going to be around to keep pushing it forward. So if anyone wants to step forward and work together as a team, we've been more than happy to train you in our ways, um, minimal ways that they are, then <laughs> to make sure that you're not alone when you step into this new adventure and journey. Yeah, honestly, like you don't really need like much experience as an officer like that before. Like we, we really just want like someone who wants to promote the club, um, like promote like universal design, um, uh, equity to Sac State. Yeah. Yeah, and and we'll we're happy to, as I say, or as 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 Rion said, we we are happy to um offer like training and advice and and that sort of thing uh in our in our various ways. And I personally would encourage you to like build and expand upon those ways as well um yeah exactly you can you really like change the club and like however you, however you see fit to be honest yeah yeah anyway we so just, yeah uh, we're uh we're sorry i i, I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> anyway uh we're looking for new officers basically that's the that's the thing in the meantime we're we're still around we're still doing the thing so um after this meeting it's 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 the friday before spring break so uh have a good one of those uh, a restful one of those um yeah there you go um it's not in the it's not in the slide so we can go to i guess the the uh, next one over just because it doesn't have any any uh, uh salient information and start doing like introductions for those who who want to do them um i can i i can go first um i'm the uh, i'm i'm william of course i'm the uh, president currently and for the rest of of the semester at least of of the disabled non disabled alliance and of a philosophy club, which is recently off the ground. Um, and I'm a, I'm a philosophy major and I'm doing this for, for the, the, whatever good it can accomplish. Um, so take for that what you will. I didn't set parameters for what icebreakers are supposed to look like at the beginning of this conversation. Um, so yeah, if uh, those who are comfortable with doing introductions, please uh, go forward and do so. I, I can, I, we can popcorn it as well. Yeah, I can go second. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. my name is Brian Tao, I'm the treasurer and I create like a lot of content for the disabled and non-disabled alliance. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm an environmental studies major. And yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really should have set up an icebreaker in the slides. I completely forgot. I was like completely forgetting that um, you know, people need social introductions and it's just gone. Um I'm Rion Zanz. I am the founder of the club and unofficial officer of club as well. I help a lot with the advertisement. Um, Brian does a lot of weightlifting with the advertisement because he does all the fancy videos and stuff. Um, but I see I do the regular, normal, not fancy Instagram ads that you see. And I also help with the slides and the content on the slides. Yeah. Oh, and my pronouns are they, them, theirs. Uh, Will, yeah. would you want to do one? Yeah, yeah. So, hi, everybody. My name is Will Lewis. Probably Will. I, I am majoring in uh, interior architecture. Uh, because I want to be an architect and that's related to the ADA thing. And uh, I have something to say. And yeah. Uh, I'll throw it over to Jacqueline if she's willing and able with the Wi Fi and stuff. I understand that's been an issue.
Yeah, I'll, I'll do one, but it has to be quick because I'm home and siblings. So, hello, my name is Jacqueline. I don't, I don't, don't know if I've met most of you, but um, my name is Jacqueline. Um, econ, um, socially awkward, and on this club just to try and learn more things. So, yeah, that's a little about me. Nice. I think being socially awkward is a prerequisite for Dana. Uh, and uh, I see we have uh, Frank here as well. If if you're, uh, yeah, familiar. sure. Um, I'll be uh, introduce myself. So, um, uh, hello there. My name is um, Frank. I use he/him pronouns. I'm currently a first uh, year uh, political science major. I'm not, you know, from a member of Dana nor from uh, Cal State of Sacramento. I'm actually all the way from UC Irvine, once again, to show um, solidarity for your efforts and just seeing how you guys are doing so far in hopes of, you know, further um, in hopes that, you know, like uh, we strengthen, you know, our ties and for opportunities of further collaboration with um, UC Irvine as we both commit to this fight. Yeah, I, I remember you, you uh, came in and you also shared a bit about Irvine's um, struggles with COVID protections, especially in relation to disabled students. Pretty much. And we also, also a new update is apparently uh, we also are uh, also uplifting uh, our mask mandates, which is going to open its own can of worms. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, oh, today is the last day of mask mandates at Sac State. I have fine. very strong feelings about it. Um, Hold on, somebody message me. Yeah, one, uh, just speaking for my own self on the mandates, uh, I, I hope that this is uh, going into effect or, or leaving effect rather, because on, on like the recommendation of, of, the, of, of expert advice, I guess, um, the pandemic is now at roughly endemic levels. Like it's, it's to the point where we, where for the most part, we don't need the mask anymore. I would like for that to be the case. I'm open for that, to that being the case, but I don't know. And if, it's not if anything case, else is attained, if it's right. just an expired mandate, then this seems like the wrong call to make. Especially right before spring break, like as you, as people, you were pointing out, people uh, do a lot of social things over spring break. You're you're telling me that you're dropping the mask mandates right before spring break when people are gonna go off and like get together and spread germs and diseases and then come back to school and have no protection at all. At least wait a couple weeks after spring break at the, at the very least, at the very least. But like, I'd prefer they keep at the very least the indoor mask mandate, but um, they're, they're not, they're not. So <laughs> I'm, um, I don't want to speak for the club as a whole, so I haven't really put anything about it out there yet. Um, but like, if we want to talk about it later, because it is relevant to today's topic, um, you know, if we reach a consensus about that, I, we could definitely share that consensus on uh, on our social medias. So. Also, Hello. welcome, Keelan. Hello. I thought I had like completely missed it and then Rian was like oh no we just started I'm like oh thank god, <laughs> thank god. you forgot time zones existed <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this because I just finished making a TikTok video and I'm like hmm I wonder what I could do while I wait for my partner to get home and then I realized oh shoot there's a meeting <laughs> oh hi hi I think if I think, Kaylin, you're really the only one who hasn't introduced themselves now, right? Everybody else is coming. Uh, oh, not this meeting. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, my pronouns are they, them, so, though I don't mind he. I've been leaning, leaning a bit more mask as time goes on, which is interesting. Um, I graduated Sac State like a year ago. Has it really been a year? I think so? Something it's like that. It's really been a year? My god. I think it's yeah. been two semesters since I've graduated. Wow, time flies. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 
I was a, uh, I got a BA in ASL and Deaf Studies. So and yeah, that, that's about it. Cool. I hope that was sufficient enough of an icebreaker. And again, I apologize for not including that in the slides and making yeah, everybody perfect. wing it. But <laughs> hey, okay. it's about the journey, right? We're all closer now, technically. <laughs> um, all right. So um, yeah, I, I imagine because of the, the, the audience I see here that uh, there is so a lot of what we're going to discuss and, and cover uh, tonight is going to be familiar to you already, uh, the people who are in the room. Bear in mind also that it's that this is uh, intended sort of as like as a, as a, a resource, as a point of reference for uh, people who may not, who may be watching this later and and, and not uh, overly familiar with uh, Sacramento State's like offerings and and to whom these uh, these uh, resources and services are relevant. So I would uh, encourage you to like add what you know as we go through these. Um, but we're just going to, to start off with um, a discussion and enumeration of, from what we understand, a basic summary of like the services uh, that are offered to disabled students at Sacramento State's campus. We've discussed the problems and issues in the past. We will continue to do so probably. These are the uh, ameliorating forces that are that are designed uh, here at this here at Sac State. So we'll go on to those. My screen share is still is still showing the services and resources page. There we go. So uh, I'll just I'll just enumerate this and we and we will elaborate um, quickly thereafter. Uh, services to students with disabilities is the general main one uh, for the for you know student accommodations and such. Um, I mentioned as well in, in the bullet points here that they have uh, virtual drop-in hours that I I, I uh, have uh, never seen anyone use as far as I know. Um, which is just to say that these that that is an available thing if you wanted to uh, discuss with a service coordinator uh, about your specific case. Um, I don't think there, you know, uh, there's any, any risk of like confidentiality there. Uh, anyway, uh, services to students with disabilities exists to basically make accommodations uh, more, more uh, accessible in uh, classroom settings in particular, um, whereas most of the time in, in the classroom by default, the design isn't universal. So uh, services to students with disabilities is uh, needed. Also, uh, full disclosure, our club advisor, our faculty advisor is the uh, director of students with, uh, uh, yeah, director of SSWD. Um, and, and, and she just, she has done for us um, a presentation in the past on SSWD's many, many uh, uh, ins and outs and offerings, uh, which is still on our, on our YouTube page, probably elsewhere on this, on this channel, as you see it. Um, I can refer anybody who's interested in this meeting to, to that same page uh, pretty quickly, if you would like. Uh, but yeah, lots of lots of information on SSWD is contained there. Uh, that's that's where I'll I'll like direct people to. <laughs> I think we also have the PowerPoint on the Discord if anyone's interested in that. Uh, health and counseling services uh, from the Division of Student Affairs is uh, extent as well. It operates mostly out of the well. Uh, it's uh, has many many services, but I've chosen to include here uh, immunizations, including but not limited to COVID nineteen. I don't know whether or not they still have the uh, uh, vaccines and boosters uh, at the well being offered. I want to say yes, um, it's, it seems likely, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where I imagine it runs out very quickly. Um, anyway, as well as uh, I wanted to mention because it has, uh, it, it is true of the counselors who are, who are being offered to uh, students that many of them are mandated reporters, except one. Uh, who is the the confidential advocate uh, to whom you you can have uh, access through through the well? Uh, I would just uh, as the last bullet point here, I would say uh, call ahead and see if you can secure an appointment with that advocate if you are interested in like full confidentiality. For the most part, that's like that's in my judgment at least that's not a thing that's particularly necessary. But for many cases, it is okay. And the last thing is the uh, accessible technology uh, initiative. Uh, facilitated by uh, information resources and technology at Sacramento State. Uh, there's a link there. Uh, that's not super useful to you watching the video, but that's a that's a hyperlink for you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's basically. Um, uh, Ryan can talk about that more, but it's, from my understanding, it's it's a uh, uh, a way of like getting uh, accessible technology to students who uh, need it on the on a sort of case by case basis. Okay. 
project. It also has resources for staff and faculty members as well. So if you are a professor or someone who works with students, you can get more information and support in providing accessible technology or access to technology through the Accessible Technology Initiative. If you look up Accessible Technology Initiative Sac State, it should the Google results should take you directly to the link I put in there. Um, if you don't want to type in that link while you watch this, but um, it is a really great resource. They've got a bunch of different things that can help you both as a student and as a faculty member. So I highly recommend checking it out. Yeah, I wonder if it would help. I wonder if it also includes things like uh, for faculty uh, uh, training with how to use Canvas and stuff. That's been uh, that's been a, a, a non-zero uh, number of issues have arisen just because uh, professors are not able to accommodate uh, accommodations through Canvas as a platform. Uh, so I'm hoping and I think that that um, uh, IRT can like help with that sort of thing. Um, but in any case, um, I'll I'll just um, let's just uh, open the floor for now to see if anybody has. Uh, any sort of uh, idea as to as to what might need to be added or, or expanded upon in a slide like this, just so people have uh, the maximum amount of information possible. Um, some of you will be more familiar with the stuff or some parts of this stuff than we are. So please feel free to uh, to to jump in with something that you noticed that we missed. You if can anything. either say it out loud or put it in chat if you're comfortable. Yeah. I have one thing. So. Um, I usually do the book scan before the, I mean, like uh, close to the school start. But however, sometimes it doesn't, uh, people doesn't like uh, the people do that and they can rely on that. So they, uh, you might want to put that in to like to check, check on that. And uh, yeah, because uh, sometimes, because the book I did, it's kind of late. So it's, can be affect the you know the assignment in the first like few weeks of the semester. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, uh, if I'm if I'm picking up correctly on that. It's it's to do it. it this is to do with um, getting textbooks. Oh yes, and uh, you know like the scan textbooks for people that uh, you know cannot. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. So are you talking about the Kurzweil? The Kurzweil, I think. That's what, that's what you call it? Yeah. Yeah, because we yes. Yeah, uh, what they basically do is like scan it and then turn it into like a cursor file or like a PDF file. Oh, of course. You that. Yeah, um, is that through uh, services to students with disabilities or is that a different? Uh, I think that's through the, like the, the technology one. Yeah, oh, I usually right. go to the technology one. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, Kurzweil is, uh, uh, is, is a software that I was actually, um, I'm not in SSWD right now uh, because I, 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 it's, it's complicated, but um, not that complicated. But uh, I, when I was with a, 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 a disabled student uh, services network uh, at my community college before transferring into Sacramento State, they were offering like uh, software equivalent to or, or in addition to Kurzweil, uh, which just reads stuff aloud uh, for people. So yeah, uh, it's uh, an accessibility software uh, that you would be able to access through IRT. I think I remember actually seeing it in the sort of um, resource and technology section as something you could uh, you could access uh, through Sacramento State's like you know uh, web platform. Anyway, I just oh, so yeah, remembered. That's... I knew why I was. I felt like I was forgetting something. I just remembered. Um, if you are hosting an event at Sac State. Of, of any kind, um, you can get ASL interpretation services and live captioning services for free through the school. Um, you can look, look up CART services or ASL services on the Sac State website and you should be able to find it. Um, but there are specific people that you can contact and a specific email address that you can message to ask for those services. Um, and 
it's all completely free to you because the school is the one that pays the um, services for for those things. So um, just a, a shout out there, if you ever want your meetings to be um, uh, live captioned and have ASL interpreters or a special event that you have going on, you can go there and make sure that your event has those services. Awesome. Yeah, live, uh, live captioning and, and, and uh, sign language interpretation is probably a, an absolute godsend to a lot of people who want to be able to access like public stuff because we've talked about it before, I imagine, but like that is a, a, a demographic that the deaf community is it's just not taken into account for the most part when we plan sessions. I mean, I don't take it into account. And I'm here, you know. Um, so yeah, that's definitely. Uh, I'm I'm glad that is, that is a thing that exists uh, to uh, to whatever extent that exists. Um, if there is anything, if there's anything uh, else in in the realm of like services uh, offered to to disabled students at Sacramento State um, that anybody wants to to put forward, uh, please. Uh, I mean, you have the opportunity later. Of course, it's going to be a discussion portion. But if if anybody has anything on the mind right now. Uh, Go and throw it, uh, throw it into the audio or in the chat. I'll give it a moment. Yeah, we can we can move on to uh, move forward to resources. Uh, as I say, we we'll, we can we can always uh, revisit an idea. But here's here's the 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 thing the the bits. Uh, <laughs> First of all, in terms of resources that you can access, uh, a lot of things are housed at the well, including, but not limited to uh, uh, health and counseling services, uh, which offers us things like workshops, as well as uh, a separate sort of uh, initiative having to do with recreational therapy. Uh, we've had in the past, um, uh, the, one of the uh, operatives for recreational therapy, I have, I'm forgetting that Professor Lou Boss, uh, I think operates out of the well. He could be, I could be mistaken there, anyway. Uh, Recreational therapy exists at the well. It is a thing that you can go and, and have a blast doing, I imagine. I mean, it's not my kind of thing. <laughs> Apologies for that. Uh, and then there is the, yeah, uh, University uh, Disability Advocacy Committee, which I think is changing its name or it's in the middle of a, it's in the middle of like a revamping process. Um, but that is uh, a, a, an advocacy uh, committee that exists on the campus for disabled student population specifically. Um, Rian can speak more on that as well, if if that is if it, that requires yeah. more elaboration. Yeah. Yeah. The the name listed there is the name that they changed it to. It used to be known as UCPD, the universe university. I don't know what it stands for. for university UCPD. Committee for um, Persons with Disabilities. Now it's. Oh yeah, yeah. That sorry, my brain has been doing this blank thing mid-sentence all day, it sucks. Um, and yeah, they, they actually just went to their Senate hearing to approve their uh, updated charge, aka a mission statement for a committee um, yesterday, I believe. So things should be ramping up very soon. There should be, you should be seeing more activity and if you want to get involved, let me know. I'll see what we can do. Um, but you know, the more people we have supporting and aware of this committee, the better. They're doing a lot of work in ensuring that um, physical accessibility standards are met within Sac State, as well as classroom accessibility standards and teaching standards they've got a whole bunch of plans in place, and I'm honestly really excited to see where it's going to go. Yeah, that is, and and, um, and also um, the disabled and non-disabled alliance is like a part of it. Like we kind of get to have a vote on like on like accessibility issues. Is that is that institutionally true? I mean, it is. We are a a, a student organization properly. We are affiliated with ASI. We get budgetary. Uh, uh, concessions from them if we want them um or yeah but is that is that is it the case that we have yeah yeah that's the case it is um yeah yeah, yeah. because uh, we have like uh, the powerpoint and it says that we have a vote 
as a uh, as an organization. Yeah, because they, they do want um, one representative from Dana. It doesn't have to be the same person, but one representative from Dana present on the committee and active, um, which is great, actually. So, yeah, that is the case. That is going to be one of our... Yeah, like, uh, our um, I, I can actually share the email right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share right now. Okay. Oh, sorry about that technical technical mixing. I thought it crashed or something. Oh no, it didn't crash. Okay, okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there it goes. So I guess the main purpose is for accessibility issues. Nice. Yeah, and it says the voting members is uh right here. So so it used to be like I guess less people and less like student involvement. But now there's more like student involvement here. Yeah, and this is exactly the the committee yeah, our name uh, we want right there. disabled students sharing sharing opinions and stuff. Is there? Uh, let me just for just for, for the record, is it? Uh, what is it? What is the uh, the committee's proposed like role? Because I'm not. I, I'm I'm uh, only uh, learning about this this PowerPoint this slideshow now. Um, what is its role? Is it like an advisory committee? Is it something? Is it a? Does it make decisions of itself? What's up? It's mostly an advisory committee because they will advise the university through the vice president for inclusive excellence in achieving its mission. Um, that's a very long sentence. I'm not reading all that, but basically, <laughs> basically, they're advising the university on how best to make the university accessible and accepting and welcoming towards students and faculty members with disabilities. Um, and there are actually, I want to say, th is it three or four different subcommittees? I think it's more, like five? I think there's four. It says okay. Right yeah, so curriculum okay, instruction, facilities, outreach training, technology. So facilities would be more the um, the physical accessibility stuff, which William, I believe you're interested in as, you know, an architect. The curriculum and instruction would be fo focused more on within the classrooms and how teachers are presenting their information and including their disabled students. Outreach and training would involve um, reaching out to students and employees and professors and providing them the necessary training to be inclusive peers and leaders within the Sac State community. And technology would basically be an extension and support of the Accessible Technology Initiative, which honestly is sorely needed. I honest, I didn't even know about the Accessible Technology Initiative till like a year ago. And I'm pretty sure it's it's older than that, but there is a lot of work being done in all four of those categories, and um, it, it's exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, and and the, and the way like subcommittees, I think it, I think here is working similar to how it worked in my community college days, uh, because of, you know it's a public university, it's 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 gonna it's gonna work similarly. Um, the the subcommittees, it sounds like they are a way for uh, students to get involved. Who don't have any like particular connections but have an interest, right? Uh, you don't. You, as 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 Dana will have, we're set to have a representative vote on the committee proper. Uh, but in the subcommittees, you can have you can have uh, people who are contributing from uh, just the regular student body, if you will. So people who uh, just want to get involved in what that's. I imagine it's a good like credential to see on a on a resume as well, but also have an impact through uh, the Division of Inclusive Excellence, which is cool because. Uh, just as a, just speaking from uh, minimal experience, to be honest, but like speaking from conceptual knowledge, um, having the having it report to the Division for Inclusive Excellence, uh, Vice President thereof, uh, is probably better, uh, more closer to ideal than having it report directly to like the president of the university, because the president of the university has a lot of stuff to do, right? <laughs> um, whereas the uh, uh, VP of, of Diversity and uh, Inclusive Excellence has theoretically more sort of on the ground uh, focus. So yeah, that's that's hope anyway. Um, so that's that's UDAC, that is forthcoming and we would encourage uh, anybody who is interested to to uh, get involved. Um, that's the, 
that's going to be how we start to make progress, putting disability in the conversation at the sort of administrative policy setting level. Um, yeah, as like, far as like if you yeah, oh, if you do want to get involved, then make sure just to email us, and we will um, I guess like CC you and like everything, or ask Dr. Vance to CC you and everything, so you can get like to kind of know like, like what's happening. Yeah, it's important to like have that in mind. Like this is a forthcoming uh, thing, a project that is getting off the ground um, or or resetting itself and- and, and We and probably won't something. accomplish a whole lot this semester because we're already halfway through and they just got pre-approved, but next semester for sure. And probably over the summer too. But that is one <laughs> excellent resource that you can look into uh, on Sac State. Once uh, the PowerPoint is back up, let me look at that. One of the resources we're touting here is ourselves uh, because we're lovely people. We have, we're completely humble. Uh, uh, but sincerely, uh, the Disabled Non Disabled Alliance is intended as a, a, a resource for people to be able to go to uh, just for things like uh, community involvement as well as uh, information where information can be supplied by a community uh, rather than, say, like the Sacramento State website, which is a bit odd uh, if you're looking for something specific. Uh, Not to mention our archive of previous meetings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we were talking about, uh, yeah, I mentioned that earlier, um, uh, just offhandedly. Anyway, the, the, yeah, uh, Dana is very much intended as a resource um, for Sac State specific stuff. Likewise, for the uh, uh, National Disabled Students Coalition, which is a, a, a sort of, um, Think of it like a super club, right? It's a it's a club with with members and representatives from many clubs throughout the California University system. Um, actually, is it is it just California? I think it is the it, it is uh, UCs and CSUs and, and CCCs. It's um, actually for the entire United States. Okay, cool. Yeah, even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super duper club. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's similarly um, outlined to to Dana, but it's uh, obviously the the topic is more general. It's talking about events and resources and stuff that are available, um, either some, some maybe some state state specific, uh, but also nationwide. Uh, I'm familiar mostly with this Discord server, which is productive and cool. Um, so that's that's also a resource that you can go to. Again, we can we can connect you to there uh, if you are if you are interested. As far as I know, it's welcoming to everybody who has a disability. That's the one sort of caveat to it. The, whereas the Disabled Non Disabled Alliance is open to whoever. Uh, the uh, uh, and uh, yeah, NDSC is open primarily, if not solely, to people who have disabilities. It's not like they check that or anything, but it's one of these sort of informal uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, caveats there. So yeah, I would definitely refer people to that. Uh, there's also, uh, it's mentioned here, the uh, SSWD Computer Lab, which is a special, uh, I, I don't know if it's like physically separate, but it is a different facility from like the normal, uh, I said normal, statistically normal computer lab. <laughs> Um, you see how our language is ableist, uh, which is just for uh, students with uh, accessibility uh, concerns, I guess. Uh, Ryan can elaborate more on that, I think. Uh, but yeah, that is also there as a as a resource. And and here, as before, we would encourage people to who uh, know more, or want, or would like to see something um, uh, added or something expanded upon, to to shout it out here uh, if you if you would like, or in the in the chat is also good. I see something in the uh, chat already about the NDSC. I was just elaborating okay. a bit. With the yeah. SSWD computer lab, that's basically where you can go if you need um, an accessible computer and technology like right away, like stat in person right now, if you need it, that is where you go. Um, Last I heard, it was closed due to COVID-19, but I think it'll be opening soon considering that they're missed they're lifting the mask mandates. Again, not a decision I agree with, but um, at least that resource will be available soon, probably. So something to consider. Server linings, for sure. <laughs> and and for the record on, on, on masks and stuff, um, I think it sounds like we, the club, are, are, are going to be uh, endorsing the idea of like voluntarily wearing them anyway. Um, just because that's that seems to be for now the smarter thing to do, um, and so that yeah, uh, we can still there's still very much like that option, and I, I don't anticipate like the the social environment of the campus to suddenly shift from 
you know, mask mandate time to prohibition on masks. Um, not that that would be administratively possible anyway, but there you go. Uh, yeah, so again, uh, uh, resources are here. Uh, this is not by any means a comprehensive list, but it is a list and we're, we're looking for um, uh, any any sort of elaboration or discussion as to, to what, if anything, ought to be like uh, added here. If you wanted to bring anything up that you know that we didn't include, discussions well, also to follow. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would like you know to add in that you know as um, someone from you know, from a from a UC Irvine, especially of our group on um, Resist UCI, we have also used um, the National Disabled Student Coalition, or at the very least, we have representatives from that coalition. That the thing is that the, about this um, coalition is that yeah I um I do agree you know with um, Keenan's you know point no no wait no 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 I I mean uh I mean Rian I mean uh Rian's point uh, is that how to pronounce your name Rian yeah Rian yeah I do actually you know agree with her point because yeah at first it does seem a bit scary and intimidating but it's actually not that bad the thing you know with the coalition is that you're basically communicating with students from all over the country from various different institutions i mean you basically have people from the csu system you have other people from uc system then you basically have from also from private universities like all over the country like i believe like there's someone from the claremont colleges you have people up from from yale it's essentially you know all these different colleges and the thing is that because this movement is going to be very is a bit young you know like about all these uh, protests and all of, all this protest and all of this, um, you know, um, pushing for, you know, these similar demands like, you know, COVID, um, co for, for improve uh, reform COVID measures for um, universal access, et cetera. The movement is still young. So there's basically bound to be some hiccups along the way, but hopefully things should smooth out as time goes on. And as we gain more and more support and more and more um, institutions willing to help the cause, this is just the beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is all, this is all the beginning, and 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 just to um, because it occurs to me now, uh, and, and in the spirit of like connecting dots here, uh, if we include like um, resources here, and it turns out that say be it Yale University offers like a, a better or more comprehensive version of something that we're talking about, like SSWD, that you uh, uh, the NDSC I can never remember the acronym is. A reasonably likely place to hear about that superior system to then take forward into something like uh, VUDEC, which um, advises uh, the, the university on building that better system uh, over here. Um, so yeah, it's it's a, a by virtue of like being in coalition, it's a collaborative space, right? So you uh, it's a it's a place in addition to aught else to gather um, ideas for how to how to improve. Uh, the systems under which we operate, um, and 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 I will second the point that it's like a that our sort of fight for um, better inclusion is is a, a relatively new one, and that it's probably got uh, lots of of bumps in the road to smooth out. It's not intent. No one wants this to be like a, an opinion monolith or anything. Uh, but the yeah the the uh, you know the the work can be done uh, better if. And maybe only if more people get involved who who want to to make it happen to make a change. That's the thing about accessibility. I think we discussed it on a podcast the other day too. Um, like it's all about community. You know, accessibility, inclusion of disabled people, the um, thriving of disabled people doesn't happen on an individual scale. It happens on community level. You need many people engaging together and supporting each other to make it work. And that is exactly what we are built for as a species. Yeah. The more people, the better. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce the, the discussion slide, which is our, our last thing. We're at uh, not, not quite an hour here. We have some time uh, if, if people are still available. So there you go. Uh, some optional prompts for discussion, and we say optional because you don't have to take these balls and run with them, uh, but we, they are ideas to to uh, prompt you into discussion. Oh my gosh, that sentence. Um, okay, here's some ones. Uh, uh, based on your experiences, how would you uh, rate sex date in terms of accessibility? Uh, what can sex date do to improve its accessibility? And uh, what are uh, ways we can support sex dates improvement? I guess apart from UDEC, which I understand now to be the main one, I can only think of UDEC 
UDEC is all, I've, I'll, I'll shut up now and turn the, turn the mic over to the floor. And you don't have to talk about Sac State if you don't want to. You can talk about your own your university or workplace if you want. Uh, I guess for me, like I would rate, uh, I guess Sac State's accessibility as I don't, like as good. Um, I don't really, I don't really know how to how to rate it, but like I like how like there's shuttles like for people who can't like walk across the campus because the campus is large for some people, and like walking is like. It, 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 it kind of takes a lot of work yeah i honestly personally i would rate it like maybe a six out of ten it's clear that they're trying but the motive not the motivation but like the the hype for disability inclusion isn't really there and there are some pretty severe oversights throughout campus that are kind of like how did this happen? Um, but for me, be around a six out of 10 based on my disabilities and experiences. I would say, personally, I think that's a, that's a fair rating. I, I'm encouraged by seeing things like um, the way the university union is designed just architecturally looks to me to be pretty accessible. I mean, I've, I'm looking at things like uh, the the lower elevation sinks in the restrooms and stuff, uh, automatically opening doors and these kinds of things. It's it's very much built to be as accessible as it as, or it seems to be to be built as accessible uh, to be as accessible as possible for like uh, students who are wheelchair users. It's also you know a labyrinthian complex. I can't find anything in the university union, but that maybe that's possibly a me thing. Um, yeah, something else that I like is that it's like it's like really flat, like on some locations, like towards yeah. like yeah. I guess the bottom part, the south part, like that's where the hills like start, but like everything else is pretty flat. Yeah, I I have to agree with the union being like a labyrinth. Honestly, I've been I I can't tell you how many times I've how many times I've tried to navigate to a new location in the union and got absolutely completely lost. Um, I, they need more signage or like some sort of map of the union planted smack in the middle of it. But um, yeah, that that part is um, it, it's it's hard to navigate um, just just in general. I mean, the, the flatness, is great, but um, it, it's hard to navigate. Yeah, and, I, yeah. I and, wish that there was a map, right? That's that'd be great <laughs> because like the there's like three itself, ex there's like I think there's like five exits. Like yeah, five exits. <laughs> the campus itself is a maze too. Yes, they did. So I wanted to rate access as a community like seven. I mean, like seven, eight, because I saw some improvement. Uh, like, you know, the yellow line on the ground. So they make it like smaller, but still uh, let the blind person can walk around. But they make it smaller. It's make it easy for me to walk, uh, go through. I don't have to like go really slow to it. Oh, we got some comments. Q yeah. and mind if I read yours out loud? Oh, oh yes. All right. Q and says, anyone know Professor Evan Hibbard? He's a deaf trans professor in the deaf studies department. I remember years ago there was a pride panel and he spoke, but no one paid attention to him. Like he'd want to chime in, but he'd just wait until someone finally noticed. I thought of that as an example of like social accessibility. Like, yeah, there was an interpreter there, but what did you talk? I think being socially included, not just physically, is important for accessibility, too. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, that is definitely something Sac State as a whole can improve on. Um, and he was also at the end of the table, which made it hard for him to be seen. Yeah. Yeah, it's the little things that go unnoticed, but have the biggest impact. 
I'm interested by this idea of like social accessibility when we talk when we talk about I, I'm, I'm just now uh, in uh, a class that isn't that is called philosophy and feminism. And I think it should be called feminist philosophy because that's what it is. But ne never mind. Uh, <laughs> I make that gripe every time I bring this up. The interesting thing that we're learning right, right now is to do with uh, is termed oppressive speech. And by that we mean like speech acts which do a thing to a rule govern system like a conversation or a workplace uh, that is in is by itself like oppressive so the speech is an action within this within this game within this system and that that action is to change permissibility facts about what happens in that system it's complicated uh but it's mostly like putting words to concepts to what we sort of intuitively understand as like social accessibility um is the is the attitude and is the is the verbiage and the modality of communication being used uh, accessible to everybody who who is uh, relevant, everybody who who, is, who benefits from it, um, is that is not a given. That's something that's uh, as I, I I mentioned before, just from my own mind basically, that it's very uh, easy to fail to take into account different modalities of communication. I always have to be reminded, for example, to turn on closed captions <laughs> for these meetings. And for like philosophy club, I don't even know how to do it. We do the same kind of thing over there. Um, and I, 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 it just, there is no captioning because uh, I have not figured it out technologically yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, thank you. Like that's, that's part of the picture here is the, the way that disabled people are treated in context, uh, not just the, the way the buildings are designed. But yeah. Excellent question, Brian. Why isn't closed captioning automatic? I honestly have no idea, but it's something that you have to set up internally within your Zoom account. That's how I got it set up on my account. And I think that's how you got it set up on your account, Brian. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like for Zoom, like, why don't you just make it like automatic so we don't have to like go into settings and change stuff? Yeah, yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like the, the caption button, the caption option should always be there, but it, but it's not in there from the start. You have to go in and set it up and only then will the button show up. Um, another social accessibility thing I like are tone indicators. Yes, I am really comically bad at picking up on um, jokes and sarcasm. Not because I don't know what it is, but more because I often can't tell the difference between somebody being dead serious and somebody joking, specifically because of that that brand of humor where you, you say something dead serious and the existence of people who say absolutely ridiculous things that sound like a joke, but they're actually dead serious about it. Um, but having tone indicators really helps with that. And also, you know, if you're if you're sensitive to um, rejection, like like uh, uh, rejection sensitivity syndrome, where it's it's not like romantic rejection; it's more like emotional um, rejection, where your brain makes you think that everybody hates you. Basically, um, it can help to have tone indicators to to say to what to say directly to other people that, you know, you are not mad at them, you don't hate them existing, um, and that you're saying these words with the intent of kindness, with their well-being in mind, because that can often be lost in translation online. See you later, Keelan. See ya. Thank you for joining. Keelan always brings in interesting stuff. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, why I like them. Um, wonders, and and this is um, maybe just for the benefit of like Dana internally. So I'm just spitballing it uh, here. How do we feel about um, uh, having writing a a sort of convention of tonal indicators on our own Discord server? Would that be a thing that is like feasible? Is yeah, it is that is that like a separate language? Is it too is it too weird? Because uh, I, I have very little experience. I try to to convey tone um, effectively <laughs> without without uh, external indicators, but I don't know how effective that is. Well, 
I think it doesn't have to be a complicated code. I, I see some people using slash J to indicate that they're joking. Um, and But there are like a bunch more of them that are in that same style of slash letters and they're not always immediately obvious. Um, so I'd like to point out that tone indicators don't have to be some sort of secret code. They can be emojis or you can literally just write out the word in parentheses or say at the end, this is meant in this way. This is meant to be read in this tone. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a super secret subtle thing. It, you can just say it straight out um, and that can be a tone indicator, but um, in person tone indicators are supposed to be like, you know, your actual tone of voice and like your facial expressions and movements, but that doesn't always work out well because if you struggle with tone, not only with interpreting it, but with conveying it, you can't always rely on those things. So I honestly just saying, this is how I meant that um, can be a huge help really. The tone indicator can literally be just you saying what the tone is. Yeah, in any case, um... So yeah, uh, when we talk about uh, where are we, accessibility uh, and Sacramento State's version thereof, um, the the uh, social uh, accessibility uh, uh, concept is is interesting to me because it has this connection to uh, feminist philosophy. Uh, there you go. <laughs> There's something. Do we have anything uh, anything else we wanted to bring in, either either building on that or totally separate? Um, I'm open to that in the last uh, couple minutes that we've got here. We try to keep these to be to be an hour ish, but yeah, it's a YouTube I video. Think, it's fine. I just want to throw out one thing: Sac State can do to improve is to either update or replace like half their buildings. A lot of them are so old, and they suffer for it. Um, and obviously, that'd be a huge, costly, expensive, inconvenient construction project. But long-term benefits are huge. Also, a lot of the elevators are rickety, scary, and disgusting. So I think they could use some attention too. I can corroborate that. At the uh, at the, it's it's slightly off campus, but at the Upper East Side Lofts, we have an elevator that, like, somewhere between like the second and third floor, just does this really big screech at you. <laughs> just very fun. It, it it doesn't like lurch or anything, but uh, you can you can definitely tell it's hurting um, after after like move-in day. Anyway, but yeah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would like to go to that elevator. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> may, something may happen, I don't know. Like we talk about that in the design thing about the elevator and the, one of my cable asked, like, what if there's a fire but your room is like on top, like first floor? What you gonna do if I, I, I don't know. You have to pick me up and uh, bring me down. Brian casually uh, encouraging arson in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I want to add one thing in the lost hall. Do you guys know the bathroom by the breathing? Yeah, yeah. So? Yeah, that's one. I think they need to improve how they, the way that we have to turn in. And the door, you have to open it. It's make it really hard to like open it while you like go inside because it, it's really hard to turn it. It's awkward, and that uh, that's one thing I think they should improve. On. Yeah, it's actually like some of the buildings only have accessible restrooms. Yeah, and uh, on the topic of fires, by the way, the protocol in emergencies for disabled people who cannot go up and down stairs. Um, if the fire is not near the elevators, um, some people have said to use the elevators if it's early on, 
and they don't want people using the elevators because then it'll get super crowded and then firefighters and safety people cannot actually use the elevators and then it gets dangerous. I would not use the elevator personally. I would get in contact with the firefighters first um, and then ask the dispatch, you know, stay on the phone to dispatch, um, get, you know, live updates from the firefighters and ask them if it's safe for you to use the elevator. Otherwise, you want to stay in the stairwell. It is the safest place uh, smoke-wise and the firefighters will be searching the building, looking for you. They will uh, make a search for disabled people who cannot get up and down the stairs. So just stay in the stairwell and wait for them to get you. Make sure they know you're there by, you know, being out in the open and obvious. Um, but otherwise, you know, that's a pretty shitty fire plan because there's not much you can do there. Um, but I don't have the answers for that. But that is something that I hope that we as a society can research and improve because as it is now, it's not not a great solution so especially in in california which is basically perpetually on fire um never mind the metaphorical fire uh the uh another thing that i wanted to mention that i just forgot earlier is that um i had initially put uh, in, in the resources slide uh asi scholarships i then looked at an, an email attachment from a little while ago uh which said that the uh, asi scholarship deadline for sacramento state uh, is uh, the it was uh, March 18th at 5 p.m., which was earlier this afternoon, uh, which is to say that I think the time has expired. But it has I could be wrong about that. Like it could be the case that like they didn't get enough submissions, and so they decided to reopen that window. So that is a thing that you can uh, continue, you know, look into if you're if you're watching this back later um, to see. I'd wait to hear going. from SSI directly about that. If you want, you can ask them if anybody's applied and if you can still apply. Otherwise, they do do these scholarships every semester, so you will have a chance in the fall to get a scholarship. It's uh, five hundred dollars, so not insignificant. Um, but yeah, it, it's every semester, so they, they have a scholarship specifically for disabled students that they encourage any disabled student at Sac State to apply for. So um, yeah, that is definitely an option you should look into next semester when they reopen these scholarships. Yeah. Also, um, I'm, I'm, I'm intending to pass this on to as many people as I can. The um, ASI elections are taking place on April 7th. That's also a thing to look into if you want to um, have an influence on, on your student government uh, at Sacramento State. So yeah, that's, um, that's what I've got in terms of, in terms of um, uh, accessibility stuff. <laughs> More fires in the chat. Uh, <laughs> Dana casually encouraging arson. <laughs> Uh, officially we do not legally we do not please don't get upset at us you can get upset at me if you want uh, that's okay the uh yeah so so um it, I'll, I'll turn it over to give whoever wants it like, the last word in our sort of uh discussion portion if anybody has anything else you want you wanted to bring in uh that maybe i've been talking over <laughs> uh that now would be a good good time for that um, obviously, the Discord server is still open. Everything is still like up for discussion. But um, yeah, the, we do want to wrap up soon. I'll get a moment. Okay. Well, the cool thing about uh, accessibility and universal design and stuff is that it never ends. Um, so we'll probably continue to, to visit topics. Uh, I'd Jeff, like did you want to say something? I saw you on mute. No, I was just going to ask a question. Like, um, I don't know. Like, you know how Guy Bridge is like very popular? Mm -hmm. Is that accessible? I, I don't know if it is. It is. It's a little precarious, but... Um... Because I, I don't know, for me personally, I mean, you can feel the bridge swaying and that is not a sensation I as a wheelchair user am familiar nor comfortable with.
but um overall it is it is pretty accessible there's an on-ramp to it directly from campus um and i believe on the other side as well it's mostly flat oh okay now i was just wondering because i didn't know and i assumed am i thinking of the right would've... bridge the one that's like in the middle of campus or is it the one at the edge i honestly am not good with directions if if it's the one with the cars, the road, then I have no clue. But if it's the one that's like a walkway, then yeah, that's accessible. So one on the side. I don't. Is that I don't know. There's too many bridges. <laughs> there's more than one. Yeah, there's like a couple. I need to see more bridges at home. I dream of a world where it's nothing but bridges, bridges and columns. Oh God, that'd be so complicated. <laughs> burning uh, that bridge when you get to it or whatever. I think I just mixed up two metaphors, but burning that bridge when you get to it would be very literal crime in that world because arson is a felony. Rian, you keep mentioning arson. I feel like there's a game going on. <laughs> there, uh, I can't. We touched on it in the podcast recording, and it keeps resurfacing. Um, let's just say we're very bitter about inaccessibility. That's understandable. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, felonies aside, thank you all for joining today. Uh, we have to wrap it up because we're like 13 minutes over. We apologize. But thank you for coming. Yeah. Our next uh, thing is happening um, at, at, uh, from the announcement page. I'll just uh, give a reminder to the audience as well. Um, our next official meeting uh, is April 7th. Uh, but before then, we have movie nights having and hangout sessions and stuff. You can, uh, you can stay up to date with that uh, via our various social media outlets. Um, and yeah, uh, until then, as, as we say, have a, have a great restful, whatever you want it to be kind of spring break. I'm gonna get on a train for 12 plus hours. Uh, all right, thank you and, uh, and good, good, goodbye. Salute, I don't know. No, uh, no uh, uh, where's the ramp? Where is? <laughs> we're we're bringing it in here now, huh? Where's the ramp? It's infected the main meetings. <laughs> where's the ramp? That's our hashtag. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, yeah. guys.